Hello and welcome to Talking Dogs on a Monday. Of course, today we are talking all things Bresbet Easter Cup and, of course, the Con and Annie Kirby Memorial. It was a wonderful weekend for Greyhound Sport. We were told of yellow warnings, orange warnings. In the end, uh, having written that, well, a rain sodden track might have affected a few of the dogs going to Shelburne Park on Saturday night. I was driving down and it was absolutely splitting the stones. A beautiful evening in Dublin. Yes, when I opened the door, the door nearly came off. There was a fair headwind into their face up the home straight. But all in all, conditions were pretty favourable at Shelburne Park on Saturday night. They weren't so favourable for uh, Carl Perry, representing Bresbet, of course. Carl couldn't get to Shelburne Park because the ferry simply wouldn't take off. Um, the, 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 the small breeze was too much for our, our Sheffield man and for his ferry. Uh, we are joined by Carl and, of course, the exile dub. Well, we've returned him from his exile. He's still exiled out of Dublin, but he's not exiled off the show. He's back, uh, Tommy Lyons, to 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 talk all things Bresbet Easter Cup and Con Nanny Kirby Memorial uh, related. We're going to start with Carl because I think Carl's already held his hands up off air. Let's let's allow Carl hold his hands up on air. So, Carl, did you go right or wrong with the uh, Clonbrine Treaty? Um, massively wrong, yeah. <laughs> and, and to be fair, everybody noticed it as well. Um, I had a few phone calls saying that's wrong. And, but listen, we, we, you know, we, we, it was. It's always been all the way through the competition. It's been so difficult to price with the quality of the the dogs in there, and we took a stance that you know he was um, he was one of the outsiders. You know he, his form around Shelburne not being the same as Limerick, but he did show that into the semi final, like you highlighted, that he was just coming, you know, maybe to a big running Shelburne, and and, and that that's what we got. Yeah, well, we, we didn't have Tommy last week. He would have put you right. Um, you would have gone up 9-2 to two if, if Tommy had been here. Um, Tommy, the signs were there in the semi-finals. The Clombrian Treaty was just starting to get to grips with the place again. Showed great pace to take it up at the third bend. Was picked up again then off the final bend as he swung wide. He swung wide again on Saturday night off the last bend, but it didn't matter because... He showed devastating early speed. Um, four dogs crossed the line, and I made sure to check the sectionals. I thought this is not, this is an ideal opportunity. This is a great little intro into how the race was run. Three dogs were put down on the card for three fifty, or four dogs were put down on the card for three fifty four sectionals, and they were absolutely in a line crossing the winning line. But by the corner, Clambrine Treaty was gone. Yeah, and that's been key to him. I mean. I know there's a lot of talk, I think you mentioned it in your report as well, and there's been a lot of talk about how the dog doesn't seem to produce his best at Shelburne Park or he doesn't run the track very well. I don't think there's a dog that doesn't run Shelburne Park well. I mean, you've, you've got everything. You've got fair bends. You've got good straights. There's nothing There's nothing that a dog shouldn't run. But I think he's been leaving a lot of the time. He's been leaving it in the boxes. <clears throat> and in the very top company, sometimes you won't get around, but his pace to the bend is phenomenal when he gets going. When he finds full stride, Whereas one time he was breaking, he was able to break. And when he won the Kirby Lasher, he flew out of one, wasn't it? Well, he broke okay, but then got up yeah. the inside on the corner. He broke up very well. The the semis, and went out, came out a bit, came out a bit, and the like. He came from behind to win the ledger, and we thought this is a funny dog. He came from behind to lead, and then and then hold on, and that's kind of the form that he's kept from then until now. It's kind of a you're not expecting him to necessarily fly out anymore. It's not what he does, unfortunately. But I don't think it's just Shelburne Park. I just think it's the dog. I actually think this is a, quite a phenomenal training performance and a, and a, a phenomenal sign of, of, of the dog himself and his 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 resolve because there's uh, like something has changed with the dog. I think it has. Something has changed with the dog from his younger days. Whatever he's remembering or whatever's happening, something's changed. And yet he's able to win classic after classic after classic. Like he's he's now. I hate talking in hindsight because because to say that oh yeah you know. The draw was brilliant and all that, but Glengar Martin being in five <clears throat> was certainly a was certainly a, a a help, especially especially the fact that she's been running brilliantly, has been breaking, has been showing pace to the bend, and she was likely to to cut across and whatever else. But she's actually been, she just uh, in fairness, and I know we kind of talked about her being a bitch that has had tended to do big runs early in competitions and maybe not you know produce it in the final or whatever else. Um, she had been in phenomenal form and even though she finished last that's not a fair reflection on even how she ran in the final to be honest about it so I think I think I think it's a fair result in terms of you've got the best probably the best dog in it winning the race Um, even though he's not a dog that's doing everything right at the moment 
Yeah, I, I will get to Clona Duke in a few moments. He, he missed the kick. He actually ran a remarkable race to even turn second, you know, from where he was after a few strides. But um, let's get back to Clonbrain Tree for a few minutes, um, Carl. Um, on the outside of the park, he, he showed that devastating early speed, but it's his pace down the back allied with his early speed. Um that got him there. This is a third classic for, you know, this, uh, you know, a Kirby Memorial champion, a ledger champion now, an Easter cup champion. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to give the game away, but we, we did speak to his owner, Jim Murphy. Um, and we will show you that interview before the end of the program here this evening. But he's hinted that toaster will be on the agenda for him. Um, it's hard to know how he will run toaster, but just given his record in classics, you couldn't rule him out. No, no, definitely not. You know, he, he's going to find a different... He's going to need to adjust the toast a bit. Um, Graham has worked many dogs over that have adjusted well. And, yeah, I think you know, someone else here, he's, 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 he's paced around the bends. He runs the bends so fast. He, you know, the first of two, I mean, I know he's he swung off a bit at the last and he did more in the semi-final, but he runs the bends so fast. You know, he's no, there's no easing in, in, on the bends. He's, he's driving them bends and then that's when he takes off from the second. But, yeah, he's going to feature... Um, well, I think he's going to be a top class entry for you know, I think the Irish will come more banded for the English derby, but he'll be in the top four to five for the Irish dog, surely. Uh, just with his consistency, that he's going to be hard to keep out of the frame. And when you're in derbies, you need to qualify every week. How did your market settle by, by the time you were sort of talking Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening? You know, I assume Clone the Duke was, was still sort of in around the six to four mark. And Clon Brian Treaty was he second choice, third choice? Where was he? No, it was still, he ended up being third choice in at ninety two. Um, it was still Clonmel Duke. Uh, was still five to four, and Indulation was still second for him. But both of them went on back during the week, and literally there we we ended up with them on <laughs> side. In fairness, um, against against the the, uh, the original liability, which was which Duke is fidget, and then Clonmel Treaty was a new liability. Yeah, at, what, at, what, at what point in the race did you know you were screwed? Like, going past the winning line, four in the line, you're going, oh, and then no. all of a sudden, you he's gone. No, I, yeah, just, just listen, as he, as, he, as he took it up at the first bend, that was it. Yeah, he was over because where they were crowding on the inside and, and you know, you're looking where Duke were going to come out. They, they, and I just thought, he's not back running him this week. You know I mean? I know he, he went, he, you know, he, he went together down the back last week, but and he outstayed him, but he was not going to back run him. And, uh, yeah. The race was over at the first moment for me. I know, I know my fate. Then <laughs> we're, we're we're trying not to take too much delight from this, Carl. But you know, it's it's the it's very rare where you can get a, a bookie and go, <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, but listen, from, seriously, from a sponsor's point of view, you've you've sponsored this for three years now. Your three winners have been Susie Sapphire, Swords Rex, and Clon Brian Treaty. Like that is some trio. That's a holy trinity. Like they they are three of the fastest greyhounds of the last two decades. Never mind the last three years. Um, you know, as sponsors, those are the types of dogs you want winning your competitions. Hundred percent. You know that's and and they're all we've said it already with previous that these are all classic dogs for this year. You know these are all derby dogs that will go forward. And it's same um, with the, with the entry. It's not just the finals. We've had three great finals, three fantastic winners. But three top class entries as well. You know, every year it's I can't say it's got better because they're all being top class, but it's it's on that level where you, you never disappoint. You've got such much quality to go at. And that makes the job so much better for us, you know, pricing these competitions. It's a lot more difficult. But as I said at the start, we have, you know, five or six running for us against, you know, two or three liabilities. Um, they're the competitions you want. And yeah, it was a bad result, you know, when in the in the final, but Still, you know, you're happy with taking bets on this quality race, you, you know, day in, day out. You, you, that's what you want to see. Yeah, a bad result. but It's a night for turnover, uh, Carol, over the over course of the competition. Uh, it was stop-start. Uh, prior to the first round, it was good. You know, the turnover come very late. And I think that were genuinely down to a few non-runners and, you know, dogs coming out. Mm. And then it was very quiet for the semi-final. Uh, but then it picked up a lot better in the week leading up to the final. Um, from back by Wednesday onwards, Wednesday there's, a, there's, there's a lesson there. Yeah. Stick in, stick in four to one chances at eight. You'll definitely be busy. <laughs> well, yeah, everybody said, everybody said we how big oil sports Bob were, but we, you know, we couldn't really lay him that much. You know, he went off a 10 to one shot, and you'll know yourself, he's, he's one of the fastest dogs of a 550 when he's right or gets it right, and he, he's gone off a 10 to one shot. It's, yeah, it's bonkers. It's just that's just the depth of the quality that you're seeing. It's, yeah. um, and even, even just a little bit in the uh. 
we laid the fidget at 50 to 1 anti post, so she's got the each way as well. So, yeah, the each way book wasn't great either. It was, it was, it was so, we went all in and, and that's it. I really, yeah. I really am sorry to be so delighted <laughs> with, with the result. Uh, Tommy, uh, we just mentioned it, the last three winners. There was a time where, you know, Classic winners struggle to back it up. Like you, you, if you got one classic in your career, you 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 were doing well. The last three Easter Cup winners have bucket full of mm-hmm. classics between them, and it could have been more. Like you look at Clambrian Treaty, could have won the the Produce Stakes very handily. Swords Rex the same. Swords Rex was hot favourite last year's English Derby. He's narrowly beaten in the Ledger by Clambrian Treaty. Susie Sapphire wins an Oaks at Champion Stakes, um, a Derby, of course. Um, it's. It's, it's safe to say the cream has been rising to the top of the Easter Cup. Oh, big time, big time. It's um, but it's it's always been it's always been a brilliant competition. I think it's it comes it comes kind of it kind of, it comes at a time where it really kickstarts the season. I used to love when I was a kid going to Shelburne Park, and I used to love the Guinness Six Hundred and the Easter Cup. Two of my favorite competitions throughout the entire year. Don't know why they just maybe it was that quality always kicked in for the for the Easter Cup as well. It's um. Hopefully it'll stay, it will stay like that. There's no reason why it won't stay like that, Ian. I mean, I mean, it's this isn't this isn't surprising to us that it's that it's this good. I mean, Clown the Duke was a was a was an English Derby finalist last year as well. I mean, Clown Brian Treaties won a couple of classics last year. Is a seriously fast dog. Um, yeah, quality quality abound, Ian. Quality abound. Yeah, quality abound. There's no question about it. Uh, let's get into the remainder of the finalist. Um, into the opening corner, Clown Brian Treaty. As I said after. 15, 20 strides, it's it nip and tuck. You know, it's four of them in the line, and all of a sudden he's gone. Um, Clona Duke and Boyle Sports Bob were, were a fraction off the, the leaders passing the winning line. I don't know how he did it, but Clona Duke absolutely burst his way through the gap um, at the opening corner to go second. He's he's a good four, four and a half, maybe even five lengths down at one point. He's beaten two. He runs an absolute perler. It's safe to say that if he had hit the lids, you know, we could have had a very different Easter Cup, but he didn't hit the lids. He's already proven himself at the very highest level winning Um two select stakes on the either side of the pond. He's obviously a juvenile derby champion, an English derby finalist. Um, he will now have a, a straight run to the English derby. It was confirmed yesterday. I was talking to Kevin O'Brien um, with Clona Duke. Delighted with the dog, disappointed. Uh, felt that undulation was was pretty pretty up for it in traps. And that may have just put it off Clona Duke at the boxes. And yeah, hard to disagree that, you know, maybe any sort of noise may have been putting them off. But he missed the kick as it was. He still runs a remarkable race in second spot. Tommy, going to Toaster, he'd have to be, have to be on the short list. Oh, yeah, he has to be, especially having the experience as well, Ian. Um, yeah, what you're right. What he did at the first bend, how he managed to get through, uh, squeeze through. It's like he nearly jumped for a stride to say, I had to get through here. Is that determined to get through? Um, you don't, you know, Clam Ryan Treaty had been building up towards something like this and you don't give a dog like that four, four and a half lengths and, and expect to pick him up. Uh, Clam Ryan Treaty mightn't be the strongest there over 550. He does he does his, his power work into the first bend and down the back, around the bends and, and the first two bends and down the back. But, um, but you still don't give him that sort of, that sort of leeway and expect that you can pick him off. Clown Cl- Duke ran a cracking race, but the funny thing is, I don't think it ever looked in the race. I think Carol said it. Um, I don't think there was ever any other result after the first bend, though. It never no. looked like it. I know you've got Clone Duke, and you're saying there's a strong dog in behind, and he's got this wonderful pace, which he has, obviously. But Clone Ryan Tree, he had it in the bag, didn't he? Yeah, he did from from, from early. There's no question about it. Um, Carl, I'd imagine there are two dogs that you'll be keeping relatively short um, in the English Derby betting. Obviously, uh, a much stronger English contingent this year. But the one thing I say about the English dogs is that they, they tend to get a few, you know, a lot easier, a lot more easy races in the UK. And then when when the pressure is really ramped up in a derby, when it, it really gets hot, five, six greyhounds of, of real quality, that's where the Irish have the advantage because they've gone through the likes of this competition. So Clona Duke, Clon Brian Treaty, I can't imagine there's big price available. No, I mean, definitely. It's not going to, what's happened on Saturday night, going to determine from how strong his chances were for the English derby. I, I thought prior to the Easter Cup, he was still my my pick for the English Derby. I thought he's very much fits the Sodrex profile from last year. That this will be a stepping stone to a to an English Derby tilt. And you're right, and yet there's there's some some great dogs about at the minute in England. You know, 
Rab seems to have got a kennel full of kings and queens to have a go at. But you're right, some of the races that you know competitions have won, they won't have been tested like the cat, you know, the, the class of the, the Irish dogs coming over. And it should I mean with the dates for the Irish dog going back, it, this should be the best entry they've had for many, many years. Um if you've got a dog that you know is capable, you should be trying, you know, you should be coming over. And, you know, I expect some guys to be coming in eights and tens, vanfuls of dogs, and it just should be a top class competition. And yeah, it's, it, I mean, I, funny enough, it's on me to do to do this this morning. Try to look at the market for the English Derby and reshape it a bit because I see King Memphis everywhere at sixteen to one, and I think it's bonkers because it should be twenty five to one to field with this quality, and that is just generally what it should be because. Yeah. No dog should be 16 to 1 with a calibre, and especially an English dog with a calibre of um, dogs that are coming from Ireland. Yeah, we're, we're looking at the final from Saturday night, and there's, you know, I, I would say there's a strong possibility that at least four of them will be there in the English Derby. Um, Given the fact there was three bitches, though, that that's that's the slight complication. Uh, whether undulation could go across the toaster or, or stay in Shelburne for the Sporting Press Irish Oaks. The same for Glengar Martha and Droopy's Fidget. I, I personally think undulation is a five fifty yard greyhound, so the five hundred meters of toaster probably better suited. And the way the Matthews family have supported toaster in recent years would you know would suggest that they'll be going. Whether undulation's going or not, I don't know. Droopy's Fidget. Don't know if Robert Gleeson's going to be going to England. There's a big commitment for him. He, he's sort of very much on the fence at the moment but Droopy's fidget given the fact that she's owned by by two Englishmen and she has English form uh, and then Glengar Martha well we know Pat Buckley is going it's just a case of whether he feels she's more of an Oaks bitch or perhaps potentially for, for, for the English Derby who knows but uh, either way this this you know, the Easter Cup form always, always has worked out in the English Derby. Like my, one of my great memories in Greyhound Sport would have been watching Farlow Melody win the 1992 Easter Cup before going on to win the English Derby at Wimbledon. You know, at that time, I'm not sure there was ever a window where a dog was in such unbelievable form from the start of the Easter Cup to the end of the English Derby. And, and that's what three or four of these men will be hoping they can do with their dogs. Looking at the remainder of the field, Drupy's Fidget was third. You, listen, you, you said you got caught at 50 to 1 each way, Carl. Um, she's a fast lady. She's she's taken well to the Irish scene. Um, obviously, she's a Category 1 winner in the UK, but listen, it was great to see her running well. To be fair, when the lids opened, I thought she was a winner. I, I, I thought yeah. she'd actually found her best break for the final. And she went, she went to the bend. I mean, Undulation had come out well. as, And then, like you said, the four dogs hit the line and there was a bit of scrimmage and, and the six come out of it. But a gen, in, with the first 10 yards, I thought she was going to win. I really did. I thought she was, when her lids opened, I thought well, she's back to, she's found the best break for her when it mattered. And and that's, you know, we were training like Robert, that's what he's capable of. He's getting the best out of him when, you know, it's needed. But yeah, she's, um, she, but she's still won a great race to be finished third. There's, there's no, there's no, uh, shame in being being further in that sort of race with them caliber of dogs, and I'm sure the owner will be very pleased. And and they'll be setting a big targets, whether it's the Oaks, whether it's coming back for the Derby, um, they should have a big year with her. Um, she made a great impression on me when she she broke on the scene last year in the UK and won the uh, puppy competition at Sheffield, and she just went off by all a bit, of, and then obviously went back to Ireland and and regrouped. And uh, yeah, I think she's getting to a group of things, and she's a probably a bitch that you you want to be following through the summer. Yeah, Tommy, um, the, the bitches, we didn't mention it uh, too much, but there were three bitches in the final. It's been, you know, it's been a, a running joke with us for the last four years that it's just the ladies have been taking over. Um, all, all three of them, you know, are in contention, crossing the winning line. They all ran their race. It, it just so happens that they just couldn't quite get around the corner. Um, that was that was circumstance more than anything else, but... Again, th three very fast ladies. Yes, Undulation finishes fifth and Glengar Martha finished last, but the two of them really did play their part in this competition. They did, yeah. And undula Undulation <clears throat> came in in good form and actually um, just got squeezed out. Probably probably the one that would, who would least opportunity to show what she was capable of in the final. Glengar Martha actually just coming across to the bend cost her. And actually, Drewby Fidget getting squeezed up at the bend where Clone Duke produced that remarkable burst of, of determination. Um, she actually ran a superb race afterwards because she could easily have lost plenty of plenty of ground at that point. And if, you, if, if, you, if you if you press pause off the second bend, I'll say to you how far Drupi's Fidget going to be beaten. You'd have said yeah. seven lengths. She's beaten yeah. two lengths and a length. Like she's beaten three lengths yeah. and third. Like that's unbelievable. I think Carl got off lucky. You know, when it's eight to one Clombroy and <laughs> it could have been fifty Drupi's Fidget. 
That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> no, the one was, who was a better <laughs> result, Clona Duke or, or, or the winner? No, the, the um, Clona Duke was the best result, yeah, uh, on the night. Really? We actually had it on side. We had him on side all the way through. He was never really, he was, he was a, a skinner in the anti post book. Um, but the D- fidget was the first dog we laid actually at the first show up at 50. <laughs> it's always a good sign, <laughs> yeah. But first, when you lay, do we fidget about six lengths down at halfway and beating three? Yeah, remarkable run, remarkable huge run, run. Huge. yeah, huge. Three and fast boys, Bob actually ran, boys, Bob actually ran better than better than his his finishing position suggests, too. Actually, he's a dog that'll be at his best when he gets a bit a bit longer trip. He he is a dog. I think we will be talking about later in the year. Uh, I I still think the penny is yet to fully drop on him. He's only had the fourteen starts. Huge pace, massive engine. Um, I'd assume he'll be toaster bound. Um, I you know that that seems to be the you know Paul Paul's view with dogs like this is taking the big targets only. Easter Cup, English Derby, Irish Derby, and it could be the same next year. Easter Cup, English Derby, Irish Derby. That that's the way I'd see him going. Uh, I want to mention Paul. Paul lost his mother on Saturday morning. Uh, Bridget Hennessy passed away at, at a, a great age, at uh, ninety six years of age. Um, and we send on our condolences to the entire Hennessy family. Um, let let's 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 give the last word again to Clon Bryan Treaty. Um, Carl, obviously he's a dog you'd love to own yourself, but. Again, we may not have seen the end of his classic winning ways. This is a greyhound that will be bang there in in more classics in the future. Have no doubt. Hundred percent, and yeah, and, and at least, yeah, I think this, this will be classic winners come out of that race. I think that you know, Conor Duke will play his part all year, and Clement Treat will be on in in the list for everyone that he enters. And same as the ladies, the ladies will, will should dominate the, the bitches scene as well. Um, I think there'll be plenty more classic winners come out of this, or at least finalists come out of this race, and. Um, yeah, I'd be excited to follow how Treaty goes and, and if he comes to the UK and then where he goes after that. Yeah, the winner is Son of Pastana, Tommy. I think it's without shadow of a doubt he, he's leading the way for Pastana. He, he's a great way to kick off his, his, his relatively young stud career. And a second uh, dog, Clona Duke, is is without question the best of the Malikis we've seen. Both Maliki and Pastana were trained by Owen McKenna, of course. Yeah, Clambrine Clum- Clum- Treaty actually is a is a funny dog in the sense he's he's won three classics, and yet he feels like a dog that that there's something just not clicking yet that he could be phenomenal because because when he won that when he won the Kirby, we thought my God this could be absolutely anything trouncing dogs in 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 Irish derbies and everything like and and maybe he will this year maybe he will he it just feels like it feels like there's still something to click and I bet you I bet you even though he's won three classics. Graham is still saying, why can't I get this fecker out of traps? Why can't I get him out and flying out of the boxes in Shelburne Park? I bet you he's looking at it all the time because I'm sure that's the type he is. You don't get the results that Graham has been getting for years without trying to find, you know, it's a bit like the Willie Mullins thing. You know, you go to, to, to every depth that you can to find out why am I not getting the very best out of this dog? Three classics, and I still think there's better to come. <laughs> yeah, um, you know it's funny to say, like you talk about, you know how you how you consider dogs relatively. And um, Mirren Murphy, um, the joint owner, wasn't there on Saturday night. She had to work. Um, nor was Kay, uh, uh, Jim's wife, uh, and Jerry, Jim's brother, who actually bred Clon Brian Treaty. But they they posted a video, and um, as you're watching the video, you hear them go, "He's away. He's come away," and like he hadn't. By his standards, he had. They're they're delighted yeah. with the start, and all of a sudden they know because you know that burst of acceleration is coming. It's it's like when you're at the lights and you take off alongside the fella, and you have that that little you know uh, not my car obviously enough, Tommy, but we've driven your brother's car. It definitely has it where you put the foot down and it goes. Um, and that's what Clown Brian Treaty does. But it just goes to show that you know they know their dog. They know that he's never going to be absolutely hammering out of traps. But if he comes away on terms or, or relatively close to being on terms, he has that acceleration to the corner mm-hmm. to take it up. And yeah, I think he's showing a level of maturity, certainly through the end of his ledger campaign and now through this Easter Cup that will stand to him. I think he's a more mature greyhound than we saw in his early days. And I think we'll see, uh, like, don't get me wrong, he's been a, a model of consistency. He's like 30, 33 races, 13 wins, eight seconds and five thirds. But I think we'll see a more consistent sort of level of performance going forward with them and um, I wish I wish his connections the very best and my, my heartiest congratulations a fifth Easter Cup for Graham Holland a second in the row and who's to say he won't be winning more classics before the end of the year that's Graham I'm talking about not just the dog um, 
yeah, a great Bresbet Easter Cup. Our thanks again to Carl and to the Bresbet team. And on behalf of the punters, Carl, thank you. Yeah, yeah the Royal Man. Yeah, we're we'll just waiting for we'll to come back and play it up there. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to wait twelve months for the next bet. <laughs> yeah, Carl, we'll keep you. We'll keep you on just for a, for a moment or two because the, there was some good action at Shelburne Park and just maybe one or two names that you will recognise as regards maybe English Derby and whatnot. Um, but but before we we go through the remainder of the sort of undercard undercard Let, let's talk about the puppy oaks uh, some very fast ladies Tommy around um, Bally McDanica though was the standout performer in the early rounds of the first round shall we say of the uh, Conan Annie Kirby Memorial she got knocked out in the second round just didn't happen for her she's a track record holder in Limerick she does a 28 28 the other evening in very 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 blustery conditions it was just a stunning performance she put six and a half lengths between herself and Fairy Footsteps who has looked a bit of a star herself around Newbridge she's a very special Special lady, Tommy, especially when she hits the lids. And by all accounts, it seems that she's becoming more consistent at boxes. And that's what we want to see because <clears throat> it was um it was a display of galloping, is what it was the other night. It was it, wildly impressive considering the conditions that were in it. Because when I watch it and you watch, you know, how hard work it looks for some of the other heat winners and some of the other dogs on the night, just because of the conditions and all that, she was just like different league. She just strolled out as if it was nothing. Um and obviously that's in her. Obviously that's in her when she did the track record below in Limerick. Um, the 27 was 83 in Limerick. Um, yeah, you just want to see that bit of consistency from from the point of view of will she win the competition? You'd say at this stage, she'd be a really difficult one now for Carol, I would suggest, to try to price in that in that competition. What way would you price a, a bitch that's done 27, 83, who's clear best on the in the heats the other night in the, in the Puppy Oaks? I don't know what way yet. And I think I think that's reasonable enough because she's only had nine runs, so she can improve again. Yeah. And that I just like to see that bit of consistency, but I don't know if we're going to get it yet. Might take a little bit more time. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I, I think if she was what crash bang thunder like a Susie Sapphire, you could stick her in at even money to win the competition. But because she's not quite yeah. blessed with that sensational early speed, don't get me wrong, she has early speed. You can't do the clock she can clock without being fast early but when you consider that the dogs that are the bitches that are going to be around her going through the remainder of the competition Truby's Riggle was next fastest 28.45 she was such an impressive winner down at Newbridge in the Brownstown Tango unraced um, I thought she left a bit on the track I thought she faded a bit coming home I think she's very strong normally I would say there has been absolutely nothing done with her since Newbridge and I'd say she probably just needed the run Crafty Bondi stopped a run off the second bend when, when about to sort of get into full gear she's only beaten three lengths two immensely fast bitches the other heat the opening heat won by Ravens with Elsie flashed out got across to the fence and kept on digging really like this lady she ran in the early rounds of the Ravenswood uh, or the the Brownstown Tango Stake in Newbridge as well and she just couldn't quite get around from the draw and uh, it was no surprise to me to see her winning the other night. And the last heat was won by Sober Flower, a nice type for Sean Malone um, and Mert Lahey. Um, Sean has owned a couple of nice dogs in recent times. And this Sober Flower, I just like the way she went about it, stretched on down the back straight. Kurog Lady, who's normally blistering early speed, missed the kick, but showed great speed to get into second spot. Yes, she's beaten three lengths in 28.80, but I've no doubt she'll be doing 28.30s and 40s around Shelburne in the very near future. She's a full sister, full younger sister to a certain cooler of Annie Hoffa. Now let's get on to the undercard action. Um, Carl, high trend as our Laurels champion. He popped out the other evening in a 5-2-5 yard contest, open 5-2-5, but he's already a proven classic winner. He is when I say professional, like the word was literally written for this fella. He never missed a kick. He's got great early speed, loves the fence, keeps on finding. If Graham brings this dog to Toaster, I would definitely be interested. Um, is there any quotes about high trend, I wonder? No, well, well, we are checking. I think he, I think he is in the, uh, he was in the opening betting. So yeah, there will be some prices there. And I agree. He's just, he looks ultra professional, doesn't he? he just, he does everything right, and he, he's, he's got that, you know, the will to win. He might not, you know, if he does got, he's got some flashy clocks. He has got twenty eight tens in Sheldon, but he's not talked about like some of the other dogs. You know, some of these more, more talking dogs. But like I say, he's just ultra consistent, and he's, he's a, he's a proper, proper dog. Tommy, in many ways, I was more impressed with him on Saturday night than I have ever been. Um, I just wonder, is he a better dog this year? And it's funny. If, if he is, I'll tell you, we have a dog. Well, it's funny you say that, Ian, because while you were talking about the heats of the, the, the puppy oaks, I was searching to see whether any prices for high trend uh, for the English Derby because, okay, you, you know, you'd have concerns. 
He was, we didn't think he was a strong stayer last year. Well, you'd be worried about, you know, the long run to the escape. You'd be worried about the 550 and all these sort of things. But I think maybe was he just a stronger, better dog now? Is he yeah. just, like, we, we didn't, we, it's funny, we didn't talk much about him probably because, even though he won a laurels, probably because we thought, ah, yeah, he looks, he's a real speed merchant. And if, you, if you're a speed merchant in Ireland, you're nearly neglected, if you mean for sprint. <laughs> you are, you were nearly yeah, are, because yeah, if you're not yeah. saying 550, you start thinking, well, if you're not going to get 550, and we do talk about it, it's all, it's, it's all, it all ties in in a kind of a funny way, but we do talk about the derby saying you don't really need to stay at 550 anymore. You need to stay to some degree because you've got top class playhounds all around you. You've got to do it right and got to get home. You can't just fall over the line and expect to win an Irish derby. But like, I just thought, wondered the, the other night, was this dog maybe a dog that had developed quite a bit over the course of the, the, the winter and is now a dog that will stay 550? Because if he does, if he does, if he does stay 550, he's a proper greyhound. Yeah, he's he, there's stamina on the damn side. Like one or two of his comrades yeah. in the UK, Carl have been very, very strong. Um, the the Mary dog is is a comrade. Um, I know Beepers Larry's his comrade. He stays five fifty strong. Uh, but high trend, yeah, really like him. Last year, you look at him and you're going, yeah, you're a real Laurels type dog. If, if this was the first time we'd seen him at Sheldon Park on Saturday night, I'd have gone, God, he looks a real five fifty sort of Derby type dog. Just a, just a. Yeah, first instinct, 28-36, into a big headwind up that home straight. He absolutely devoured the ground up the straight. Very, very impressive. Uh, Karma King was a good winner of the upcoming 2024 champion puppy, 550. I don't think he's eligible for it because he's a March, but I, I could be wrong. Um, but um, 29-78, it, it bodes well considering the final was won in 29-77. Um, left a little little bit of ground that traps showed good early speed got a lovely a clear passage into the opening corner I think he's a nice progressive type for um, Timmy Carmody and Owen McKenna um, he's certainly a dog I'd be keeping an eye on uh, Bally Mac Sennon was back in third I just want to mention him he ran into tra- traffic problems a couple of ra- times in the race he, he made he caught my eye once in the in the Kirby uh, I, I think we were only scratching the surface of this fellow I don't know if they'll put the wide back on him and um, he was looking in the whole way around, as far as I could see. Um, just just keep an eye out for him. Um, Rye Hope Beach won the finale in thirty two thirty. An absolute monster of a greyhound, just a powerhouse. Tommy, the six hundred five seven five six hundred has really given him confidence. He's now getting oh. around the corner. There was no stopping him the other night. He was wasn't just sign of him checking on the corner. Rode that corner and just. Good luck, lads. I'm I'm off. There is not a greyhound in Ireland or England could match this fellow for pure pace. Like, uh, like that's that's proper company to be winning by ten lengths, and um, he's a he's a savage greyhound. He really is. I mean, we talked about it early last year, and it feels like it's taken a full year of of of, uh, of Michael O'Donovan's persistence to try to get him to 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 this level. You know, uh, he's uh he's when he's when he's in full stride, he's an absolute joy. I would like to say the poor old Carikino in the upcoming the five fifty. He might have broken the record for the most trouble on the on the run to the bend. <laughs> it was, it was, I knew I knew when the reserve came in. Someone was up in the commentary <laughs> box with me and they said, Give me a winner. And I was oh Carakino. I said, Carakino win. I said, lads, see what's gone into four. He's straight for the fence. I said, You're goose there. Yeah. Don't back Carakino. Um Raiho Beach Carl, is he in your derby betting? I, I I don't know if they'll go that route. If he was mine, I'd probably just stick to the five seven five six hundreds of Shelburne. He'll be undoubted favourite to win the Shelburne Open six hundred. Um a great fame his competition but if he did go to toaster he'd certainly one that you'd have to keep in the radar definitely so yeah. I don't know if he's in the betting now there's, a, there's, there's plenty of Irish entries I don't know if he's one of them we try not to put too many dogs in that won't run because we find it unfair that you know that it, it's misleading and it's it's really difficult to get a guide for who's coming who's not coming and, and it will gather pace now and we'll, we'll review it you know every week now but no I, I think he'd, I think he'd love toaster I think it, I'd if it was mine, I'd be very tempted to come to Toaster. I think he's got a lot of lot of the attributes you need for Toaster. Um, he is the attributes you need for winning Greyhound races. He yeah. is an app now, Carl. When I say it, he is an absolute monster. Like this mm. dog would devour most dogs, and I mean the vast majority, including a few that were in the Easter Cup. Like he's unbelievably fast. Um, Touch he's frustrating, but year. unbelievably yeah. fast. Yeah, I mean, he's um, doing thriller. I think he was running in that competition where they were doing twenty eight tens. Um, and I remember because he's breeding, his, his stamina ridden all over it with Carl Zaggy Jan. Yeah, yeah. No, she she's breeding well. That was a, that was a hell of a litter. There was a point yeah. where last year we didn't even know if he was the fastest in the litter. That's how many there was. Three or four of them, Tommy. Um, the sober dog, and of course the Blackstone lazy bitch. Um, 
unbelievably fast litter. Um, Easy Razzle won um, on the card. Tommy, the Laurels runner-up, she charged into third bed, took it up. There was a bad fall here for Mary's wedding. Just an update. I was talking to Michael Butler yesterday. Um, she she has she has a career ending injury, but thankfully, thankfully they got treatment to her very very quickly. She, she was very comfortable overnight, and she will be operated on either today or tomorrow. And um, all will be well with her. Um, I I, I I'm praying and and that seems to be the case they are confident that she will be fine um and then fastest run of the night came in the second race in the card bally mac marino dropped down to ao company tommy and it's safe to say he was just different gravy to them it was good to see him back to winning ways he had really really caught the eye in the early rounds of the easter cup and then went out the following week having attracted support in the outright market um but the other night I think I think we saw the real Bally McMarino. Just probably a dog that never really sort of fulfilled what we saw in the Juvenile Classic last year. But it's great to see that he can still produce big runs. And who's to say he, he couldn't still have a very big year? Yeah, like he, he, he couldn't lead off a 204 the previous week. Got a bit of trouble. 203 the other night, which you think which which is fast. He's not leading, which is which is funny, but he's got phenomenal pace. Um is yeah, is he a competition dog? I don't know, or is he a dog that I'm, I'm ever comfortable backing? I don't know, but he's one of those dogs you're always afraid of. Uh, just going back to Easy Rattles for a second, I wonder if she, I wonder if she uh, an English Derby type, but totally just, just, just be the right type of track for Easy Razzle. I don't know, but the fact that it's going against the Oaks would probably stand against her. Like I'd say, does Johnny well, know, like, does, does does Johnny have three or four that he bring? You wouldn't go see, with one, would you? That that would be my first concern. Would be what do you, what do you have the few to bring with him? Because I just think it could be the type of you know she's the type of one if she can hang around a little bit through the competition. A true a, a, a true wide seed is is a good thing in toaster. If you have a true wide seed, one that doesn't cut corners, one that that stays their line, uh, but still maintains their speed. Um, I, I think Easy Razzle would fall into that bracket. Whether, as you say, toaster is on the agenda, I I highly doubt she's it. But got, who's to say? She's got the ability to to kind of to to, to weave away or true and 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 keep qualifying. She's always she's very dangerous if she can hang around in a competition. Yeah, she's got serious pace. She's certainly she's certainly fast, no question about it. I think the only winner on Saturday night we didn't mention was Abbey Side Spice. Cracking little early pace mm-hmm. Greyhound wins an AO. Will always mind its grade because it just doesn't quite get home. But it's winning races, and that's the type. Oh, Carl, Abbey Side Spice. This now I mean is made for the UK. I mean made for the UK. This would pick up race after race after race after race. Won the opener on Saturday night at Shelburne Park. Did a two oh five, and I think it did a one ninety seven or something like it's it could or a, a fifteen ninety seven. Could really run to that third bend, Abbey Side Spice. Um, Carl, that's where we'll leave it because we're we're going to get stuck into the Limerick action and the. Cork action. Um, our thanks again, generous sponsorship of the Bresbet Easter Cup. But I'll tell you what, you've been rewarded in spades. Susie Sapphire, Swords Hero, and now Clown Brian Treaty. Three absolutely special greyhounds in a special competition. Well done. Hopefully, Carl, you'll get over next year. You might come a little bit earlier, maybe stay for a week or two. I'll definitely do. I'll be there for a week and make sure, yeah, I've got a backup plan. Yeah, the, the time is on Friday night, which was very too much late to get a flight or anything. We were just stuck and yeah. uh, disastrous. So, my weekend ended up being uh, you talk to Sheffield instead. <laughs> not much uh, well, but yeah. Uh, no, uh, so, uh, so disappointed not to get yeah. the final, but um, so pleased how it went. And uh, a big thank you to Sarah Kinsella. She kept us up to date with loads of social media posts and videos and comments and interviews, which were fantastic as Sarah. So big thanks to her as well. No problem, Carl. Now, Carl, make sure you get at it now, right? Add a load of Irish dogs into that uh, English Derby betting. We're, we're coming for you again. We're coming That's for it. you again. Definitely. Listen, Carl, thanks very much. No problem. Thanks, guys. And then there were two. Yes, now it's time. We're going to take a look at the Con and Annie Kirby Memorial from the wonderful Limerick Stadium. Tommy, um, it's safe to say this Kirby is keeping us guessing. Uh, nothing is coming straight forward. Um, Favourites aren't necessarily getting over the line. Um, Doug's leading, not getting home. Doug's coming from off the back. Um, Doug's checking at very 
inopportune times. There was one or two dogs where the other evening you go, well, this has to qualify. In fact, it's going to win. And then bang, in a second, it's gone. It's out of the race. It's out of the competition. Um, let's get into it heat by heat. The opening heat, obviously, Trap 1, Serene Rex came out and that looked to open the door to his kennel companion in Trap 2, Stone Park King, who had a, a great draw on the inside of, of his main dangers. But he missed the kick and he found himself sort of disputing second stroke, third into the opening corner, forced to check his stride as Romeo Kingpin drove into the opening corner to go on uh, from Radical Harry. Scooby Pacemaker was third down the back straight, but stormed home. And Scooby Pacemaker coming around his rivals, a dog who I've seen plenty of, and I just thought to myself, I, I liked him early, and I just thought he hadn't really progressed all that much. And I think maybe we have a late developer on hands, Tommy, because I think this is unquestionably um, a, a career best display. Yes, he does 28-28 the previous week in defeat, but I think this victory in 28-46 coming from where he did was very much a standout display from his point of view. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> just, a, I, I don't I'm bamboozled by the by the, the Kirby, to be honest about it, Ian. I can't make head or tail of it. Like you said in the intro, it's a difficult, difficult competition this year. It's going to be a pacemaker around a cracking race and tracked well and, you know, stepped out where he needed to step out, you know, to, to avoid trouble and give himself a bit of a run at it. Um, he strides like a big dog. He's a 76 pound, which is a decent size without being huge. Um, uh, he, he, he's maybe, and maybe he is a late developer. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I just, I, I honestly got in, I can't make head nor tail of the competition at the moment. Um, I think it was it were the three of the four heats the other night, the dogs came from behind to win and, 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 and you know, from probably unlikely positions. Uh, this, I don't know. I think like, I, I like the performance and the 28, 46 is perfectly good. I don't know what, I don't know how you'd rate the track on the night. I think it was 20, 28, 31 was the fastest of the four heats. I don't know how you'd rate the track if you have any opinion on it, Ian, but, um, yeah, it, it just it, it, all it said to me was it's even more difficult now than it was at the start to try to try to think about a winner of the competition. Well, you could literally draw a blanket over the twelve qualifiers. Mm. You know what I mean? The, you know this first heat obviously it was a short head Scooby Pacemaker chinning uh, Romeo Kingpin only a length and a half back to Radical Harry. I didn't even think it was a length and a half, and a head then to Stone Park King back in fourth spot. And um, mm. the next heat was won by yeah, Bally McPage by a half length, the neck and a short head. Then we had a a, a relatively big victory for Merit's Inclusion, yeah. uh, winning by four lengths. But then the last heat was a neck and a short head. Like th there just doesn't seem to be an awful lot between them all. And I suppose the betting really really does sort of reflect that. We'll get to that in a few moments in time, but let's stick with this opening heat for a moment. Romeo Kingpin was a short head second. I, I'd have taken, I'd have taken any price off the second bend. I, I was amazed he was picked up. Like this is a dog where sometimes his starting has been his problem. Um, but he, when he gets to the front, he stays there. The other evening, he got to the front earlier than he normally would. Um, probably one of his best ever starts, gets to the front and um, comfortably builds up a, a you know, builds of what would you describe as a comfortable lead in this sort of company, uh, and yet he's he's picked up and, and and chinned by a short head. No, I can't figure it out. I wonder. I mean, it's not like it's not like the winner came extremely wide apart, maybe in the straight. I wonder was it a bit maybe slightly heavier on the inside on Saturday night or something? There was just I just I, mean, I, the, I watched the heats loads of times over the, over the first yesterday, and um, he's just struggled with it. He's just struggled with him. I wonder if Ronnie is Ronnie merit to the fact that it might have been might have been a little bit. More testing on the inside, don't I? Don't know. Merit's inclusion one from the inside. Um, I, I yeah, no, Merit's inclusion got the, got the solo, but, but Merit's inclusion actually is also must be a greyhound named after some of your comments on the card. Oh, you, I'm not sure I've ever said Merit's inclusion on a card. Uh, it's something you do say though. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if you did. The, yeah, in fairness, you in, card, fairness in fairness to the Matthews family, they have definitely, definitely named about eight dogs about after things I've said in the past. Um, some good, not some not so good. Um, back in third spot, uh, we had Radical Harry, who, like Tommy, he's only four four races deep into his career, and yeah. and we still haven't seen the best of him. We saw that twenty eight eighteen run on debut, but ever since then he's just looked like a dog who's just getting used to his surroundings almost like a young lad been thrown into a, a senior team for the first time and you can see the ability is there and it, it the penny's going to drop 
very shortly. I think he's a very, very fast greyhound, and I still think he's a big player in this Kirby if he can do things right. Um, Stone Park King went out having been so impressive in the previous round. I'm sure he'll have a bright future. Just missed the kick when he needed it, uh, and, and, and that cost him. And Balnebola Jim, who, who'd run so well through the competition, missed the start and found traffic on the opening bend. It really didn't happen for him. Even then, he clocks, clocks 28.69 in defeat, and he's only, what, three lengths ahead and a short head off the winner. You know what I mean? It, it was that time type of heat. Um, 28.46, 4.11 Kingpin did to the opening corner. I would say I'd say he'll struggle to match that because that's not his game. And the 16-17 w- was good to the third bend. Let's move on to the second heat. Um, five, Bally Patrick getting up in a desperately tight finish to beat the long-time pace setter Feshti's Mo, who had taken it up on the corner from the early pace Naki and Dazzler. The, the difference there was Feshti's Mo had the inside line. He took it up off the sort of one and a half into the second bend and, and led for, for much of the way there after the Bull Falcon. He's looking more and more a real five seven. Seven five six hundred yard greyhound. It's just too sharp from this five two five yard trip. Our cracker will get to you know, down the back straight. He looks the most likely winner. He still looks the most yeah. likely winner off the last bend, and just inexplicably just didn't see a gap and decides to move off. And then all of a sudden, his race is gone. He, he goes from looking the likely winner to being out of the competition in fifth, and and he's only beaten what a length and a half, a neck and a short head. Like he's beaten less than two lengths heartbreaking for his connections because he is a dog that has really really developed since the juvenile classic and I think he's a dog we'll be seeing much more of but Ballymac Patriot who who hasn't really produced his best at Limerick just yet but he's showing the signs that it's happening draw hasn't been kind to him thus far hasn't really got a chance to get loose the other night he didn't get loose again but he's prominent like he's he's fourth off the opening corner having raced third to the bend he goes third on the run in and then grabs the victory in the closing strides to win in 28.66, the slowest of the heats. But yet, no surprise if he did 28.06 next week off a flying start. Nah, like, like, like well, that, you know, 28, what has he got done in, in, in Tralee is 28? 28.21. 28.21, like, yeah. I mean, you'd imagine he can, he can, he can go quicker here again. Um, it's just, it's just, again, another funny one, like, like, Festy tomorrow, you, you think, you think that, that by the way, Patriot is, Probably doesn't have an awful lot of a chance. I think our crackers is. I think our crackers may be slightly unlucky in because when he goes for the the gap, I think he kind of it was close kind of and, and, into, and and then he decided to move off and then he ran uh, into the, well, the dog in his outside. Think, was that? I, I think he tipped the dog on the inside. He tipped might have tipped the dog as he tried to go between the two, and that caused him to force him to almost exaggerate his check out wide. And that put him on top of the next dog, and then he's in trouble. And like, I mean, there's a length and three quarters between the first five home. I mean, that's yeah. like that. That's desperately lucky, as you say. He goes from probably winning the heat to to being knocked out of the competition in fifth place. Uh, you're right about Bold Falcon too. The Bold Falcon as well. Just at the moment, things look a little bit sharp. I still, I still forgive like dog, dogs like this who are who are young and inexperienced. Things can change um, quite rapidly. Like, I mean, we still have to remember that 28-13 on debut. Um, it was a huge run in Tralee, so I, I still, I still tend to forgive him. His four runs since have all just been promising. Every one of them, there's been the pace has been there. What is what I should say? The pace has been there in them all. Just the, just the, the, the whole um, kind of putting it all together and kind of making it into a, into a, into a solid kind of effort is not is not there just yet. But it'll come. I just, yeah, maybe, he, maybe he will be a five fifty five seven five six hundred dog, but. I just wouldn't give up on him just yet. I think it's just he's already had five runs and he's been between two tracks already in his he, career, he, you know? He's, he's without question a dog. He's going to get 29-20 for 550 at Shelburne Park. Oh, yeah. But he's mm. not going to be leading every night. You know, I, I think that's that way, safe enough to assume. I do recall having a... There was a dog in a derby final a few years ago. I think it was available four to one and I t- said it absolutely no chance. And it was because it had done a big run but had done it when the opportunity was there to lead and and you know get clear, but was never able to do it when dogs were those dogs with an early pace in in and around it, and even though it was running well and ran well in the final and all that sort of stuff, it just could not get clear. I don't, like I've no doubt, absolutely no doubt. You're right. The ball, the ball Falcon will do twenty nine twenty, maybe even some twenty nine twenty over five fifty. It's whether he can develop to get that. And I say it's too soon to say yes he can or no he can't. Yeah, maybe he can develop that consistency and that bit of early pace, but um, the overall ability is definitely there with the Bold Falcon, no doubt about that. 
Yeah, let's talk about the two early speedsters. Um, uh, first, Naki and Dazzler on the outside, absolutely, you know, running superbly well for young Daniel O'Rahilly. Like, uh, I'm old enough to be his father. You're probably just about old enough to be his grandfather um, with the grey in your sense. beard there as well. Uh, but Naki and Dazzler, he, he's real early speed on the outside. Like, to lead up Feshti's Mo is, is fair running. Um, yes, he stays the middle line and lets Festi's mope his inside. But when these early pacers are led, you, you just fear. But this fellow kept on going to the line. Like he's only chinned in the latter stages to, you know, for, you know, he, he'd been right there on, on the line. Um, only Ballymac Patriot came beyond the two of them. Um, he, he finishes a close third. Festi's mo, uh, this daughter of Grangeview 10, she. She's prominent into the opening corner, just a marginal second. And Aki and Dazzler runs a great line, takes it up off the second bend. She's only picked up the closing stages to be beaten half a length. While I don't think either will win the Kirby, I don't think I'll want them around me. Um, you know, if I'm one of the, the remaining early pace greyhounds that are seen as lively hopes, because both of them can really run to a corner and run to a third corner as well. It's just probably it's probably, it's probably down it's probably down the, the even around the last bend where you just begin to kind of you know fade a little bit. Uh, Fetchy Mo actually what is what you would what, what you would like about Fetchy Mo if you own it and what you would dislike about it in the in the situation you're talking about, um, is that she held her held her position really well against Bally McPatriot at the first bend and actually probably cost Bally McPatriot. No, Bally, Bally McPatriot probably lost more than it should have at the first bend. You know, goes back four or four and a half five lengths back. From Festus Mo, which he probably shouldn't have, and actually ran a crack and race to win to get up. We have to, I think, I think we're overlooking Bally Mac Patriot a little bit, but um, <clears throat> but Festus Mo actually ran, uh, held, showed nice early pace, but also held the line well and said, No, you're not coming along in here, and that's a great sign of a greyhound, especially, especially you now she's decent size for a bit, she's 68 pounds. The winner was 81 pounds on her outside, yeah. it's a fair difference between the two. You're very right about what you said about Bally McPatriot. We, we're sort of, we're, we're not actually taking the run on its merits. He does lose no. that. Okay, he doesn't lose all that ground on the first bend. He loses it more so as the second bend and I'll momentum lose, yeah, and sort of get himself going bend, yeah. again. He just probably mm. just hasn't really got fully attuned to Limerick yet, but it's happening. If he'd been on the inside of Feshti's Mo into the out opening corner, we could be talking about that 28-20 run from Bally McPatriot, yeah. setting the standard, and he could be 5-2 to two favorite to win the competition. Um, the others there, our cracker we've mentioned, Ocean Tesla, uh, walked out and, and died for the inside and seemed to lose more ground into the opening corner as a result. Um, she ran on strongly, as you'd expect. But yeah, the 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 end of the road for Tom Fitz, he, he's, he's had an enjoyable couple of weeks with this lady and I'm sure he'll have plenty more enjoyable times with her because she um, she's only going to improve when she steps up and trip in the future. Uh, moving on to Heat 3, it was won by Merritt's conclusion. I was actually sitting down in Shelburne for five minutes with Plunkett Matthews ahead of racing, and um, we were talking about undulation mainly, and, and then he brought me back to Merritt's inclusion, a dog who I really liked in his first two starts in mm -hmm. Shelburne Park, and he's looked very green and puppish um, since then. He'd moved off the corner a couple of nights at Limerick, but it's funny... As I said to Plunkett, like he's moving off the fence, but I have no doubt he's an absolute dead railer. You know, from what I've seen of him thus far, he 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 had, certainly at Shelburne Park he'd been a dead railer. You move him off, and he wants to get back in. And while he doesn't seem to be handling the first bend at Limerick, um, he is running quite tight enough to the fence thereafter. Um, this was a, a culmination of the few runs sort of suiting him and. A, a, Probably a slightly better start to get up the inside of Kulavani Poppy at the corner. Does move off, causes her to sort of check her stride a bit, and she quickly lost her place. Merit's occlusion, though, there is one thing I can say about him. When he when he gets going into that back straight, he is mass he's massive back straight pace. Uh, and he, he left barefoot on fire standing, who had been left second on the opening corner. Gallops on to win in 28-31. Fastest run of the night. The Matthew family have won this twice before. Um, with Cable Bay, obviously, and, and Boyle Sports Hero, two very fast greyhounds. Merritt's inclusion, um, he's, he's there pitching, Tommy. He, he He's getting there. Um, I love a dog that's improving, uh, and he's certainly one of them. Yeah, he is. <clears throat> he's I'm not so sure about the tight rating because he can look very wide off the last bend as well. I mean, I mean, we say he won from the inside, but he spent he spent the whole back straight down down very wide and and the same up the up the home straight. Um. I, I, I like this is the, this is what confused me about this Kirby. If you just take that as a as an isolated race and say just look at that and you go, well, that's impressive. That's a fair dog, and and possibly it is. But he's not, I don't think he's featured near the top of the market, is it? 
He's around ten to just one. Just looking here. He's around, there's about, probably a, about six dogs ahead of him. There's there are just looking at us here now. There are six dogs ahead. Of him. There are four to one co-favorites with Boyles, um, Romeo. Uh, Romeo King Pin Epic Chicken Bally Mac Patriot fourth one co-favorites that'll tell you is, they can't is, they can't is, can't is, is that due to the fact that he's not quite as polished as them yet well, yeah look at his section his early section isn't 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 um, matching up either in terms of what you want anyway if you're, if you're thinking I'm going you know I'm going to get a, bit, a, a run or guarantee myself a run I don't think he's that type of dog yet but um, I think he still looks green doesn't he yeah, is that fair. Still, I, it might be as just galloping style. Um, it, it, yeah, it might does be. Have might a, be, might a, be a slightly unusual gallop, but I can tell you one thing: mm-hmm. it's effective. Um, you know, we, we can't take away from the fact that he does a twenty-eight thirty-one off, not the fastest start by any stretch of imagination. He shows the early, he shows the back straight pace, and he's getting out this five to five yard trip quite strongly. He has improved with each and every run at Limerick: twenty-eight ninety-four in the opening round, twenty-eight seventy-three in the second round, twenty-eight thirty-one in the third round, and if he continues in that sort of on that sort of curve I, I you know i think he's a big player no question about it uh, in behind him um obviously um Kulavani poppy lost her pitch in the opening corner um two barefoot and fire slipped through the second spot epic chick having missed the kick from what i thought was a perfect draw on the outside she missed the kick and she finds herself only last into the bend she's fifth on the opening corner but then she takes off down the back straight she's only beaten what's she beaten four lengths like, that was a big run from her. She'll obviously need to improve her starting. She'll need to improve more like, or start like she did in the second round when posting that sensational 28 seconds. But having seen this run in defeat, you can see why she's posted 28 seconds. Yeah, the, 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 a phenomenal pace. I was just sorry while, I was, while you were talking as well. I was trying to look back at Mare's inclusion just to refresh myself on the previous round when he kind of missed the kick, missed the kick, got early trouble. And again, because he, he didn't get a clear on the first bend, it was even more exaggerated what he'd done the first bend moving off and, and like he was nearly sided like a crab going around the bend that night because of the way he was kind of off balance a bit. Um and actually ran a very good race, even though he'd beaten seven lengths. So he's like he's probably not that not that far off being a dog that can can win the competition in, to be honest about it. Um but but back to back to what you're saying, I think Epic Chick ran actually ran a cracking race again. Um but it also it possibly also highlights how good the winner was. Yeah. Because Epic Chick came through, burst through out of the second bend into third place, showed great pace down the back and ran on. And I just think maybe we're just overlooking the obvious. Yeah, I, I think we might be. Uh, I think there's first a time. Do you know what? If you're looking for an outright winner uh, and you, you're putting a short list there, he merits inclusion. Okay. <laughs> um, Epic Chick was second. Barefoot on fire. Um. I, I thought this was a, a slightly flat performance by him. I, I you know, we, we, he, this isn't the dog we saw doing twenty eight twenty around Cork. Um, like he turns a clear second and he's just a little bit flat, just a little bit flat. I, I'll forgive him the run. Um, obviously it's his sister Epic Chick passes him around the bottom two or into the third bend and around the third bend and and goes on to beat him pretty handily by three lengths. But I, I think there's better to come from him. But he'll need to improve greatly in, in a very short spell of type. Or he'll be finding himself struggling in the Kirby Memorial. Behind them, um, Kulavani Poppy, as I said, she lost her pitch on the opening corner, and we'd been waiting for her to get her start. She did get it, but she just couldn't get the corner. I, I, I still think she's a, a work in progress. I, I think we'll see much better from her later in the year. Tally Ho Storm and Fantasy Alex. Um, Fantasy Alex remains a maiden, um, a, a pretty useful maiden. Uh, it'll win. It'll it'll win a race very shortly, probably pretty handily. Uh, and Tally Ho Storm ran so so well f- for his connections to to even get this far. Big prices, on, uh, you know, most occasions has a couple of good runs at Limerick, and and uh, I'm sure he'll win, be winning more races for his connections in the near future. On so to the last of the four heats. And yeah, when we're talking about confusing races, here, here was another. Um, Fate Point Sean for the second week running, coming from off the pace to lead in the closing yards, win by a neck from Phoenix Tyson. Um, uh, Barry Call spoke up about Phoenix Tyson a couple of weeks ago. He really likes him. He's a lovely sort of, you know, what you'd call a professional type dog. Um, you know, he, he he's not quite where he needs to be to win a Kirby Memorial. But again, one of those early paced dogs where you probably just don't want him on your inside going into an opening corner. Um, I thought he ran well off the front um, in good time, ran a big race again at a big price in, in third spot, only beating a neck in a short head. Again, didn't happen for Bally Mac Dapper. Just another dog that just, just never really got 
got loose. He has yet to really get loose in his career. I still think there's a big run in him. I still think there's a, a big future there for him if he can just find his 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 trapping boots. Droopy's metaphor, I, I, th I think we're both in agreement that this is a very, very, very fast greyhound, but just lack of experience was his issue coming into this competition. He actually made up good ground into the opening corner after a moderate start, but was squeezed on that bend, found himself fifth into the back straight, and, and that was the end of him. And Well, you know, poor old Prince Nassim never even got a chance to land a blow. Um, he, he stumbled at boxes um, and just could never get involved thereafter. An unfortunate way to go out. But let, let's talk about the winner, Fate Point, Sean Tommy. He's, he's sort of flying a little bit under the radar. He's very strong. He's going to need to find some... He's gonna. He's need. He's gonna need to show more urgency into the opening corner if he's gonna be a big player in this competition. But there's no question. There's a big engine there. Yeah. Um. I I like the performance. I don't think he again with the whole confusion of the competition. I don't think he really ran like a middle middle or a wide seed, did he? Is he middle seed? Is it? Mm. He's he, down as know, a middle. Middle, yeah. I think he particularly ran like that, to be honest about it. I mean, he showed his pace and he he he, he just, I suppose, maybe it's just clever tracking. He, he made a lot of his ground. He wasn't as wide as the ones in front of him, nearly down the back to, for most of the, the back stretch. And then when he went, made made his move, he made it up along the inside. And maybe that's just a factor. A factor of that is the way the dogs in front of him kind of moved off at the last bend and left the gap. And But he didn't, like, fly out wide around that. But I just I did like the way he seemed. He seemed determined in his gallop. You know, he wasn't just going through the motions running behind dogs or whatever else. He was determined in his gallop, determined to to to, to get to the to the lure and uh you know got there in time. I like the performance. Again, there are there are a few points in his races where you'd say, okay, he needs to prove here or there and and you know to, to be the finished article. But he has a nice bit of experience, I suppose. And uh yeah, he's just <laughs> It's just another one with a chance in a really difficult Kirby. I mean, if you gave me three goals now to pick the winner of the Kirby, and there's only 12 of them left, I wouldn't be confident. I know, yeah. I would wouldn't. You? Oh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, to be honest, if you give me five, I'm not sure I'd be confident. Tommy, Faye Point <laughs> Sean. Like, Faye Point Sean is after winning again. Last week, he came from an absolutely impossible position. Uh, the yeah. previous week turned much closer. Wins in 28-47. He's won in 28-50. He's wins in 28-30. Uh, Charlie, 28-41, minus the 10 around Clomel. He has a record of 12 starts, 10 wins, and two seconds. And we should be shouting from the rooftops. Uh, but like, he's no question. He's a professional dog. What I loved about him was he... He found himself on the outside into the opening corner. Obviously, he's a middle seed. He's out in trap six. That's where he's going to be. But he stayed his line. But but he didn't he didn't stay out. Like he 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 stayed tight to the dog on his inside, but stayed middle. And he drove around, found himself in a pitch. And as you said, when the gaps opened up, the previous week he came around the outside. Previous this this time comes yeah. up the inside. He's just a clever dog, and that and that that shows in his record. Like he's 12, 12 starts, 10 wins, two yeah. seconds. He's never been out of the first two. Like it's remarkable. And yes, we, we, like we're probably struggling to make a case for him to win this Kirby because he's going to need to do more early. But there's no question that he has a habit of getting in the frame and you could see him certainly being close enough in the final. I've run up in the juvenile cup. He won an unraced stake in, um, in Korean Park. And he's... Um, yeah, he's trained by Graham Holland, which is <laughs> they're all ticks in the right ticks in all the right boxes, aren't they? They yeah. really are. Funny enough, he was actually nearly like it was his brother that we were talking about in the in the most Harvey juvenile. Was. He was the dog yeah. that came in with more experience. Sean did than Harvey. Um, Harvey's gone out. Sean is still there, and and he really is flying the flag for Graham Holland at British Flanagan in good time. Another fine dog for Brendan Mansley. He just unearths these types there, like. They may be that few yards behind some of the very best, but always run their race. Like this fellow, yeah, he, he's only had the three wins, but he's second and, and now nine, sorry, he was third the other night, second nine occasions, third another three occasions, like rarely out of the frame. He um he, He's just a nice, strong running, sort of a hard running dog rather than a strong running dog. He just finally, he's, he's losing that length off the, off the final turn home. He, just not quite getting to the line. Phoenix Tyson, a real professional for Ian Riley. Um, again, I've sort of spoken about him. The dogs that I'll be taking out of the race going forward will be Dapper and Metaphor. You know, I, they'd be the two I'd probably choose from the contest. But 
again, didn't happen for them on this occasion. We are left with two intriguing semi-finals, Tommy. Um, picking a winner of either is not going to be easy. Picking the first three in either is not going to be easy. First tee, Romeo Kingpin, Ballymac Patriot in good time, Barefoot on Fire, Epic Chicken, Nucky and Dazzler. You know, there's none you could really rule out, although I'd imagine in good time and Barefoot on Fire will be pretty big prices. Um, Romeo Kingpin has the draw just given the anti-post book you'd imagine he might be either favourite or disputing favouritism with the likes of Ballymac Patriot and Epic Chick but it's 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 a good contest but it could go any way oh, it's, it's a, it is a good contest and and I don't like, I don't I don't have a clue where I'd like Epic Chick to be drawn to be honest about it um, she's she, no, she's not she's not an inside seat obviously but she's in, um, in, in this heat I think she's got the right draw because I don't think she yeah. wants to be on the outside of Nucky and Dazzler who's guaranteed to go up fast and if, if Perfect on Fire does anything he's going to be edging in so I think it could be a kind draw for her but that kind draw could be quickly you know sort of you know immaterial if she misses the kick she's got to have yeah. to start um, and, and, and it's got to be right up at her very best breaks very best breaks because you know she has she has a one thirty in Limerick, she's a two oh seven in Shelburne, which is fine. It's not like fly out winning Oaks kind of an effort. It's a you know it's a kind of a okay if I do a two oh seven the final of an Oaks, there's a good chance I'm going to have to pass a couple of bitches on the way home. You know it's that it's that it's that type of a section. So it's a tricky draw, but she's as fast as anything in that race. Yeah, it is worth pointing out. Like she only again, she's only had. A handful of races like this was what this, runs, her, yeah. this, this is going to be her eighth race only you know what i mean mm. so she she reminds me a lot of billy's billy's diva obviously came from the same mm. kennel that type you know very strong um she's now a middle like billy's diva started off as a wide and then moved in and i wouldn't be surprised that this lady was was edging in sort of as her career goes forward and, and mm. is, is an inside seed in the future but um yeah she's no question she's very fast if if i had to st- stick you to pick one there if you had to, I would say uh, Romeo Kingpin, funnily enough. Yeah, I'm going to go with Patriot. Um, I, I think if Kingpin does, <clears throat> let's make, make the similar start that he did the last time he was in trap one, I think Bally Mac Patriot might get that length on him early. Yeah. And, and if he possibly. does, he might edge onto the fence. If he doesn't edge onto the fence, Kingpin will burst his way up his inside. So he has to get onto the fence quickly. And and if he does, I think we might just see uh, Bally McPatriot sort of returning to winning ways. Um, on to the second heat. Uh, Scooby Pacemakers in one merits inclusion. Feshti's Mo, Radical Harry, Fate Point Sean and, and Phoenix Tyson. Uh, Feshti's Mo will be a decent price yet again. 10-1 to 1 in his last two starts and ran very well behind both our cracker and Ballymac Patriot. Will be a similar enough uh, price, but a, I dare say could have a big say in this contest. It A lot will depend on where she is in relation to Merritt's inclusion on the opening corner. If Merritt's inclusion gets up her inside, she's set for a bumpy ride. Um, But he's going to have to trap just that little bit sharper again because Feshti's Mo is so professional. Um, He doesn't want to be a length and a quarter behind her because if he is, he's checking off. And then that's causing problem for dogs on the outside. Scooby pacemaker, you'd have to say he's got a great draw on the fence. Oh, really? Yeah, you'd have you'd have to. And actually, and even looking at sections, when he was in trap one the previous week, he did a one twenty seven compared to a one forty three the other night from five. Uh, it's a huge difference. It very much screams of I'm I'm capable of making the most of the inside draw here. Yeah. Uh, for the remainder, uh, Radical Harry, Fay Point, Sean, and Phoenix Tyson. It's going to be a case of where are they on the corner in relation yeah. to a merits inclusion or a Feshti's Mo. Radical Harry is going to need to, you know, put the foot down in the first few strides. Um, Fate Point Sean is definitely going to need to improve his early speed, and and Phoenix Tyson is going to have to be at his very professional best. If I if I had to force you to pick one there, I'll be the top one. Scooby yeah. pacemaker to win it. I'm going to take a chance on merits inclusion getting up the inside of Feshti's Mo in the opening corner. But I think Scooby Pacemaker will emerge as the main threat down the back straight. I think it be, could be a, a battle for third. A lot will depend on what Radical Harry does in, in, in terms of, of trap rise. If he does find a start, he, he's a big, big player. Uh, Cracking Kirby Memorial, Tommy, widely competitive, intriguing to say the least. Um, we're no closer to picking the winner, but I'm going to have to force you to, <laughs> to pick one. Maybe maybe let's pick a a price price one a price sort of dependent one rather than you know you know Romeo Kingpin Ballymac Patriot Let, let's boil sports there Kingpin Patriot and Epic Chick are four to one joint favorites co favorites of three Radical Harry and Fate Point Sean and Scooby Pacemaker eight to one Merits Inclusion ten Knocking Dazzler twenty <laughs> Barefoot on Fire uh twenty Feshti's Mode 
at 25 and then the two outsiders Phoenix Tyson in good time at 33 to 1 pick me one there and to, to just run the truth very quickly the price is Bellamy Patriot fourth one's round about right Kingpin has a good draw so you can understand that every chick is a tricky enough draw you say it's fine it possibly is but it's still quite difficult fourth one is probably slightly in the short side eight one radical Harry is very short um, because I just think he's going to need more time and more experience he's going to be a lovely dog uh, Scooby Pacemaker has a great draw so 8-1 to one is more than fair because you think you're going to have a finalist I think I'm going to have a finalist if, I, yeah. if I'm backing Sco uh, Scooby Pacemaker you'd hope and so Fate Point Sean not so sure what to make of that because I think that's a difficult draw that's the kind of a he either jumps up now and says I can win a Kirby or he's out of the competition kind of semi-final draw so 8-1 to one is only just about fair Merit's Inclusion 10-1 to one, that's a reasonable price um, you know based on the run the other night and I think there's probably more to come and uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's 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 about it's about right. I mean, the others. I think they're 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 on the short side. Uh, well, you know, I can't I can't see I can't make a strong enough case for at the moment. So if I had to go for one, definitely definitely based solely on prices, I'd have to go with Scooby Pacemaker. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I I think if you had to pick one that is you know for your life that will be in the final, he'd be close enough to the top of the list um, because he's got such a kind draw if he traps on terms it's very hard to see how he doesn't make the final well, yeah, um, he's got the the nice combination of he's, the fact that he can show early pace which he didn't get a chance to do the other night and he's got a superb draw he should prove and he can he can break out the box and he's got he's got uh, Merson Tudor who's going to step off at the bend into I mean you know, all the boxes are ticked for in terms of in terms of yeah, it's there for you if you're capable of taking it. Their pups, their lane experience, greyhounds, anything can happen, and you know you wouldn't have your life on it. But I think that's the one I'd say if I had to play now, I'd be playing at eight to one. Yeah, yeah. There's two middles in each of the heats. That's worth pointing out. But there's still a potential mm. for you know a Scooby Pacemaker to get four or five in the final. At which time he could be eight or ten to one again. Um, so yeah. you have to sort of draw that into it as well. Um, just Ballymac Patriot four to one. I I think he probably deserves to be a clear favorite. Um, I I favor him over Kingpin in the semi-finals. But four to one is is you know it's not it. It's not saying there's juice there. I think it's about right. But if, if there was one at a price, maybe the merits inclusion at, at ten to one. I I I think he'll um I still think he's progressing at a, a rapid rate, and I've been a huge fan from the very start. So just at the prices, maybe him. Um, I, I'm not nothing's jumping off off the page at me. Um, as I said, but no, a cracking Kirby Memorial will continue, of course, at Limerick on Saturday night. Before then, on Friday night at Limerick, we will have the National Greyhound Awards. Um. You know, we'll be recognising the stars of 2023, of which there were plenty. So keep an eye out for uh, all the award content later in the week. Tommy, just uh, briefly before we go, I want to mention just the two semi finals of the Greyhound and Pet World Super Sprint at Curraheen Park on Saturday night. And uh, a couple of recognisable names. Road Exile won the opening heat. He was sent off the 4 to 6 favourite, and he duly obliged as a 4 to 6 favourite. Should challenge on the opening corner, a lead run in is the, is the comment. Uh, always prominent got the better of droopy's zelda um who had led up into the opening corner and um, she's she's a nice bitch for for johnny um but on the corner road exile just was a bit more fluent and and took it up from the pitch when she sort of took a stride for herself i'd say at the opening corner that that's that's not saying she eased or checked or anything like that, but just she just wasn't quite as fluent as Road Exile, who really charged the corner, and he stormed on to win by by a comfortable two and a half in seventeen fifty six. But the second heat was won by Romeo Taylor. We saw plenty of this fellow, of course, in the unraced stake at Clonmel, and he's always shown terrific early speed, and he did so again the other evening, led into the opening corner. The the two dog was up his inside at that point. Burgess Shack, who was a a, a much proven open sprinter, but Romeo Taylor. Lots to like about him. A really fast greyhound. Hopes Hurricane, uh, who was get it right back in the day. Uh, looked a real prospect in his early youth. Um, showing pace in second spot. But Romeo Taylor could be uh, could be one to keep an eye on over these types of trips. No, it's going to be a star, actually. You know, and, and this is the one that been catching my eye. Okay, he swings very wide into the straight. He wouldn't mind that too much. Um, he, he actually... He's very inexperienced. He beat Barry McDonough in that, uh, in that final in Clown Mill. Um, clearly, clearly, when he's when he when he's he had missing the kick a couple of times over five two five and wasn't quite getting home when he when he had to do a bit of work in the middle of the races. He is phenomenally fast and could be an absolute star over sprinting trips. Um, I think that was a really really nice performance. It's good. It's good. Fine. Road Exile is, is thoroughly professional. Really good dog. Really high quality. Good final. 
Yeah, it'd be interesting to see where Romeo Taylor goes from here. They could go down to two bend route. They could easily step him back up to four bends. And yeah. dare we say uh, laurels, perhaps, Tommy? Uh, does he strike you as one for the laurels? Uh, I think that would be my target with um, with Romeo Taylor. Have no doubt whatsoever. What about yeah, the tricky draw now in the in the final. He's in one in the final, which is which is difficult enough box now. And if you, if you, you know you need to do everything right from it and. The way he ran off the bend the other night, uh, that can be momentum, that can be lots of different things, but especially in a sprint around the tight track. Um, he has a tricky tricky draw, and I'd say based on that, you'd probably slightly favour Road Exile or Droopy Zelda. But I think Romeo Taylor could be a bit special in time. It's a good, it's a good contest, Tommy. It's a really good sprint. It is, yeah. It, like, is, it really Bur- is. Burgess Jack can run, you know. And uh, mm. Hope's Hurricane is a great draw on the outside as well. Even and he's far in the bolt. Like we, we haven't even got to the bottom of him yet. He's only, he's only raw. Um, he's shown enough to suggest he, he too could, could cause an upset if he, if he took a flyer. Cracking competition to look forward to. That's it from us though on this Monday evening. Stay tuned though. We have a little bit of an extra treat for you. As I said to you earlier on, we, we caught up with Jim Murphy, the owner of Clon Brian Treaty. But that'll be with you in just a moment. But uh, my thanks again to the Exile Dub, Tommy Lyons, you're back. It's great to see you. Um, Carl Perry, a great guest, as always. Wonderful sponsors of the Bresbet Easter Cup. And, uh, well, listen, it's always good to see the bookies getting it, you know, getting it handed to them. Um, they got it wrong, but he held his hands up. And uh, we we, we, um, we recognise a wonderful winner of the Bresbet Easter Cup, Clombrine Treaty. The Con and Annie Kirby Memorial will continue at Limerick on Saturday night. And that really is bubbling over at this stage. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful spectacle on Saturday. And then we look forward to the final a week later. And of course, that super sprint will continue at Curraheen on Saturday night with the final. But that's it from myself and Tommy. Now it's time for myself and Jim. But that's it for me for the moment. Good luck. Good evening. God bless. Well, yes, we're lucky enough to catch up with the happiest man in Ireland over the last two to three days, Jim Murphy. Jim, um, Tom Bryan Treaty on Saturday night proved that he can handle Shelburne Park. It was a case of, well, simply too fast for his rivals into the opening corner. Once taking that lead, I think it was all pretty peachy for you out front. Oh, it was brilliant. Like, I mean, uh, we went up to Shelburne for the cup, for the Easter Cup, like, and we were, we were just more or less in hope than, than, than being confident, like, because... Going in last year's, he just wasn't handling it too well, but he's figured out how to run it. Like, well, list fast dogs handle tracks. That's that's the main thing about it. Track you want to be handling at Shelburne Park, but as we said on Saturday night, he handled it to perfection. The early speed he showed, the the pace down the back straight, it's all been there, of course. A, a Kirby Memorial and the Ledger down at Limerick, now a third classic. Uh, it's getting a bit of a habit these days. It is indeed, you know, so, <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll enjoy it anyhow. We're like, you oh. uh, know. Okay, they weren't there, were they not? Um, they were with Jerry. No, they, were bo- they were both working and uh, and then they the had arranged to, I, I, I put on a bet on, on, on the back and buzz so they could watch the race, like, you know. So, and then there was a bit of a gathering with them, like, you know, to to see it as well. You know? So they, 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 they really enjoyed it. Like, you know, they, they let the hair down as the thing goes. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's lots to cheer about in Limerick over the last few years, especially with the hurlers and whatnot. But uh, tell us about the dog. Obviously, your brother Jerry bred the dog. Um, he's been he's been with you from the start. He was. I, I had him at home. Like, I mean, I was away at the time. Like, I mean, and Jerry sort of said, I'll breed off for her. Like, I mean, I was sort of hesitating. And uh, <laughs> we made a bit of a deal then. I said, so Jerry is official breeder now. You know, so... So and I and, I, and they come back. Most of the pups come up to me for real, and like you know. So you I've, knew, I, yeah. I've, I've, did you know, I've, did you know from early he was pretty good? When we when we got we school and knocked down like as a local school and track owned by Liam Hayes, and uh, we, we when you when you get some decent time, even even a hand slip over there, you get you get the indication of what you have, like you know. So when he was he was showing it early on, he was like the same as Prince and and Hero before him, like you know, you, you, it, it, it stands out almost at the beginning. Like, you know? By the time they get to, you know, by the time we see them on the track and they're with Graham Holland already, it, it already means we know you think he's pretty useful. Uh, Graham was obviously pretty hopeful from the start as well. He st- stuck him into an unraced stake at Shelburne Park, showed all sorts of pace in that, but the, the starting wasn't there. The starting approved through the Kirby. We saw him uh, produce a brilliant run in the final of the Kirby. And again, even at Clamell, he was unbelievably good at Clamell and, you know, a bit unfortunate there. But then to get the ledger at the end of the year, and yet all of these performances were, were mainly outside of Shelburne Park. It must have been sweet to, to win at, at HQ on Saturday night. 
Oh, brilliant. Was, you know, especially because everyone was doubting, especially your colleague up Tommy Lyons. He, he couldn't <laughs> understand why he wasn't handling Shelburne, but he, fi he, finally, he finally found out how to get around it. You know? It's been some run for you, you know, between Hero and Prince uh, and now Tracy. Um, you know, is this one that you, you sort of just take it, take it handy? You just realise, or, or, or do you realise you're just in a moment? I suppose we you have to accept it as it is. I remember way back we had a dog called Mercury King, and uh, we we sold him early on, and he went on and won the the, the Kennedy Cup in Limerick. Like and people said, enjoy it now. You, you'll never have another one like you know. So <laughs> it was only the start. So we'll we'll take whatever comes. You know? So we're now talking about six or seven classics you have under your in, in your bag at this stage. Yeah, I'm sure we're 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 we are lucky. So touch wood. <laughs> and of course, you mightn't be finished for the week. He's he's nominated for Greyhound of the Year. Certainly, a, a worthy recipient of 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 a nomination. And um, it'd be a great way to cap off the week. It would be the icing on the cake, and I said to be we, we keep the fingers crossed. <laughs> um, we all want to know: Does Clumbrine Millie have any more on the ground? Uh, is there another Clumbrine treaty coming up behind? Well, we have a, we have a young bitch here at home, like, and she she gone on on knock long times. She was pretty handy, like, but she came in season. So we'll 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 she's more or less ready to go go back training again today, like you know. So Clan Brian Treaty, we have to ask you. And she's called, she, she's called Clan Brian Legend. Clan she Brian was actually Legend. named by mistake. She was meant that name was meant to go on a dog, but she ended up getting it. So it might be well, it might be a good omen. It could be a good omen. It's certainly that. Uh, the next question, Clan Brian Treaty. Obviously, he's still relatively young. Uh, the second Kirby winner to go on and win the Easter Cup the following year. On with uh, Swords Rex as kind of companion. Um, where next for him? I would gather to, to toast her, like I mean, from talking to to to, to Graham, like I mean, that he rec he reckons like if he if he if he can handle toaster to be made for him, like you know, yeah, that's that's his dog. feeling, like and I suppose then we'll, we'll come back for for the Shelburne version, like you know. I, I suppose given the calendar, it's sort of the obvious one because you have a great big long break after the English Derby Challenge, win, lose or draw, he'll be he'll be able to gather himself and, and get a nice rest into yeah. him before taking on Shelburne again. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, the, the, the calendar is great this year, the way there's a big gap between the English and the Irish Derby, but I suppose maybe the ledger suffers a bit then in, in Limerick. I was going to say, there is a ledger there to be defended. Yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll wait and see what happens. No? Jim, best of luck. Um, best of luck on Friday, of course, at the National Greyhound Awards, but well, um, after Saturday night's success, I, I don't think you need luck, to be honest. I think you're riding the crest of a wave. Let's keep on riding it. We will, because that's what uh, Graham said on after after the, after Saturday night uh, when we were getting the presentation. We're lucky together, he says. Like, no. yeah, you certainly are, Jim. Our heartiest congratulations and keep up the good work with Clonbrain Treaty. We will indeed, and thanks very much. Thanks, Jim.